this is your girl, Minister Asia. We're back for yet another episode of the Ambassador's Hour. Long time no see, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the our mantra. For I know who I am and whom that I stand, whom empowers me to be. I am an ambassador for Christ, and this is the hour to recognize me. You guys know that the word of God says it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Also, the word of God depicts that there is the power of death and life lies within our tongue. We, according to the Jewish version of the Bible, the Kamash, when God breathed into our nostrils the breath of life, we became another speaking spirit. And I always like to say, I won't shut up until the devil fears it. I understand, according to Romans, that I have to call those things that be not as though they were. So, daily, we have to confess the word of God over our life. Because just like Jesus, when he was faced with opposition after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he met the enemy with the word of God. And guess what? He is a defeated foe. So... Let's say our daily confessions because through our confession, we will have possession. Say them with me with power, clarity, and authority. Say, I declare that I serve the true and living God. Do you know our God's not dead? He is surely alive. Say it again. Say, I declare that I serve the true and living God. I am an authentic worshiper of the Most High God. I declare that I am who God says I am. I can and will do what he has called me to do. I declare that God has begun a great work in me and he will perform it until the coming of Christ. I am the workmanship of God. Do you know that's through Christ Jesus? I am the apple of God's eye. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God perfects that which concerns me. I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above only and never beneath. I am the lender and never the borrower, not the borrower. I am a good man and my steps are ordered of the Lord. God will never fail nor forsaken me. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. I declare I have a sound mind. And you guys know, if you're here, not new to the Ambassador's Hour, that we always say our daily confessions twice. The first time I go through them, and then the second time I say them slower with clarity so that you can declare them along with me. So let's say our daily confessions again. I declare that I serve the true and living God. I am an authentic worshiper of the most high God. I declare that I am who God says I am. I can and will do what he has called me to do. I declare that God has begun a great work in me and he will perform it until the coming of Christ. I am the workmanship of God. I am the apple of God's eye. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God perfects that which concerns me. I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and never beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. I am a good man and my steps are ordered of the Lord. God will never fail me nor forsaken me. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I declare that I have a sound mind. It is so in Jesus name. Amen. You know, Lauren Hill made the song popular, When It Hurts So Bad. She asked the question, when it hurts so bad, why does it feel so good when it hurts so bad? But I'm here today to talk on a topic, when it hurts so bad. How do you trust God when it hurts so bad? 
Today, we will go through lots of encouraging scriptures because I know that my family is not the only person that has been plagued by grief or has endured arduous and difficult times. Since November, we've lost three prominent people in our family, two to chronic illnesses and one seemingly died an untimely death. And it was all unexpected. But the Lord prompted on my heart back in January to do this video on when it hurts so bad. However, I hadn't yet to lose my mother. So he wanted me to wait till the dust settled after everything had gone on to deliver an even more encouraging word. So, like I said at the start of the video, I hope it's not prolonged, but it's definitely a necessary word to encourage anyone who is encountering grief and needs to understand the process and needs to have faith and hold on to God, even when they don't understand and even when it doesn't make any sense, we're going to learn today what to do when it hurts so bad. As you heard in the introduction, when it hurts so bad, what do you do when it hurts so bad? You trust God. You have to trust God even when you cannot trace him. As this second slide says, you trust in God when it doesn't make any sense. You trust God because though it doesn't make sense to you, it has to make faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Even when we don't see the end of our sorrows, even when we don't see the end of the current circumstance or situation, we have to know that God has a master plan and that it's going to always work out for our good, that he's a sophisticated God. He is he has infinite wisdom and we have to rest assured that he's too wise to make a mistake, that he will never put more on us than we can withstand, more on us than we can bear. And we just have to trust him even though it doesn't make sense to us. And we will find out why later on in this video. As you can see here, only God knows how it all turns out. And for those who belong to him, it turns out well. I can have peace and solace knowing that my mother belonged to God. And so her life turned out well, even though her sickness was as unto death, though all sicknesses is not unto death. Hers was, but I have faith and I have reassurance that the Bible talks about in heaven, there are leaves on the trees that are for the healing of the nations and she is totally healed and totally restored and in life it may not be something as hard or horrible as horrific as losing a parent or a child or a loved one it could just be the fact that you may have lost your job you may have been facing with rejection you have to learn how to trust god throughout the process. In this video, we're talking about a grief process, but each and every individual has to endure a process. It could be a spiritual maturation process, learning how to grow up in God, learning to trust him through the process of learning his word, learning how to trust him through the de deliverance process, having faith to overcome the residue of the old hurts, the old pains, the old temptations, of addiction and perversion and various different trials and struggles. Learning how to trust God through the process of developing a sound mind and knowing that he is God, even when fear and opposition seems like huge mountains, just being able to speak to those things. So as we progress through the video, as we're talking about when it hurts so bad, what do we do when it hurts so bad? How to trust God when it hurts so bad? We have to trust in his master plan. So briefly, I'm going to talk about the grief process and then we'll proceed. I 
whenever you take any grief recovery class, you will know that grief is a cycle. You start off with denying. I remember when my cousin passed away and I had the task of coming to tell my mom. And I was like, mama, he didn't make it. She kept saying, Asia, are you sure? Asia, are you sure? I can't believe it. Are you sure? You No, no, man. No, no. And you go through that denial because you just really don't want it to be real. And some people get stuck in step two, that of anger. Sometimes you get angry with God. Sometimes you're angry at your faith. Sometimes you're angry at that loved one because they left you. Sometimes you're angry because you didn't get much time with them. You're angry and frustrated because you don't know how your life is going to be after this transition. You get angry and frustrated because of Adam and Eve in the garden and how they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, conscience, you know, the tree of life. And you say, well, if they hadn't eaten from the tree, then... None of this would have happened. We wouldn't have had to die. You just get so angry. Like, I think about the movie, The Truman Show. When Jim Carrey realized that his whole life was a joke, that he was on a movie set, and the people who he thought was mom, dad, and the wife were just actors, he was mad. He was livid. He was hot. He was angry. He felt hoodwinked, bamboozled. And sometimes when grief comes our way, we feel bamboozled. We get upset. And then we can slip into the third stage, which is that of depression. And we may not want to go on. You just find yourself laying in the bed and crying and weeping and not changing clothes and just being there just sad and want to be in the dark and la 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 then you go to bargaining lord if I, if I, you just let me do this and then if i could just have one more day i promise i'll do this and help me and but then we have to come to a point like jesus where we have acceptance with God's perfect plan for our life and we accept that he's not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should have to repent that if he said it he's gonna do it that the promises that he made to us about heaven are real that the promises that he made to us concerning um not putting on us more than we can withstand are real the promises that all things work together they are real and we have to accept his divine purpose and his divine will for our life and as we go through this grieving process we have to understand that this is not foreign there are there's a whole book in the bible lamentations dedicated to lamenting and grieving and mourning jeremiah grieved for a year and a half you just go through the bible you can see how even jesus wept not only at the people's unbelief, but he wept when his dear friend, who he had ate with and communed with, Lazarus, died. Even knowing that he was the resurrection and he was going to deliver and raise up Lazarus, he had to trust God. And throughout the rest of this video, we're going to learn a lot more encouraging things and a lot of other things that will aid us in trusting and knowing that it is a process. We may stay stuck at that anger. We may deny. We may get depressed. But in the end, we have to accept and know that he is God. That he wouldn't do something to us that he hadn't went through himself. He's not like that. He came down from heaven and so perfect. He came down and he went through it too. When his first cousin John the Baptist was beheaded he went off into the wilderness and the desert try to mourn but then he was moved with compassion when he saw the need of the people and he put his very own grief aside to finish to finish and fulfill the perfect will of God and accept his assignment and so throughout the video you will hear me prompting you to say okay yeah i know you're grieving i'm grieving too this pain is so real 
Yes, my tears have been my meat. My tears have been my pillow. But God has a master plan. It's bigger than the hurt that we feel. And we have to accept his sovereignty that he can rule and reign by himself. And we have to get up and finish the work. We cannot forget the divine assignment. We have work to do for the kingdom of God. So we do have work to do for the kingdom of God. And in all things, we have to give thanks and we have to praise God. We have to give him a perfected praise. We have to exalt him because as we worship him, our anxieties will subside. As we praise him, we will get peace on the inside of us. We have to Thank him and praise him. In our happy moments, we praise God. In difficult moments, we seek God. Seek his face and not his hand. Seek to know him. Seek to get into his presence because in his presence, there is a fullness of joy. You may have tears right now. You may have sorrow right now, but as you push in his presence he will give you the fullness of joy so in happy moments we praise God in difficult moments we seek God in painful moments we trust God so when it hurts so bad what do we do when it hurts so bad we trust God even when it doesn't make any sense we trust God we know that he's working this process and that if we belong to him it's gonna work out good for us it's gonna finish good for us and in every moment we say thank you God Thank you, God. I say today, thank you, God, for having 34 years with my mother. Thank you, God, for the virtues and the wisdom and the knowledge that she imparted in me. Thank you, God, for her leaving a legacy for us. Thank you, God, for everything that she bestowed in our life and everything that you bestowed upon us. And thank you, God, for trusting me with this trial so that I can use my testimony to aid someone else who may be in a difficult and hurting time, just like I am. And I say, God, I love you. And just like the composer of this slide, I believe.com. If you love God, share this video with someone who may be grieving, someone who may be hurting, someone who is facing this mountain of grief and hurt and heartache and pain. And all they can see is that it hurts so bad that they don't have their child. They don't have their spouse. They don't have their parent. They don't have their sibling and they are hurting, but they have to know that God is sovereign. He's too wise to make a mistake, that we love him to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord all cliches but also true and so shall his word go forth it will not return to him void but it will accomplish that which he sent it out to do we have to believe God and if you believe God and you love him like I do go ahead and share this video as I was reflecting upon doing this video the Lord took me throughout the Bible several different passages of people who had endured grief and I want to glean from 2 Kings 4, 8 through 37, the life of the Shunammite woman. This woman, she is awesome. Let me tell you about her. First and foremost, she had a relationship with God. She had the spirit of discernment. When Elijah came through Shunam, she was able to discern that he was a mighty man of God. And she began to feed him and do wonderful things to him. She was charitable. She went to her husband and she told her husband, hey, honey, now this is me paraphrasing. Read 2 Kings 4, 8 through 37, King James Version or your preference and you will see the exact words. But she went to her husband and she told him, let's make a room for him. And she didn't just make him any room. She built him his own special room. He had a bed in that room. He had a desk in that room. He had a table um like a lamp stand candlestick he had place of his own that every time he come to do the will of god in the shunam he had a place to lay his head to reside to be comfortable to enjoy she made room for the man of god and she had room for god in her life and um because of her benevolence she was like gehazi go to her let's see what she needs and he was like she don't have no kids so the lord blessed the shunammite woman with a son and as he gave her the son when he grew up 
the worst thing ever happened. While he was gleaning in the field, he got a big, huge, huge, huge headache. And he came home and he laid on his mom's lap. And sure enough, he died. And the Shunammite woman took her son and she laid him in the bed. The very bed that she had made for Elijah. And she laid her son there. And on en route from her house to seeing the man of God, three times she encountered individuals. And every time they inquired of her well-being, she stated, all is well. So what do you do when it hurts so bad? You have to speak words of faith. Yes, the pain inside may be agonizing, but you have to trust that it won't be this way always. You have to take the lesson from the life of the Shunammite woman. And when people come to you, say, you know what? All is well. No, you're not lying because yes, you're hurting. Yes, it's agonizing. But you have to say with a straight face and confidence, all is well because you're calling those things that be not as though they were and you're believing that all is well and like the the woman the shunammite woman she had made room for god in her life and so when the thing died which was her son and i say the thing not trivializing life because life is very important but when her son died she was able to take him to the place that she had prepared and if you have room in your life when you have grief and you have a war room and you have a prayer room you have a place to take that grief and you have made room for god in your life then it opens up an avenue for solace because you've already set a foundation to release your cares and your anxieties and your apprehensions you have to make room for them and you have to speak positively no god may not raise your loved one up from the dead like he did the Shunammite son but he will raise your loved one up from the dead in the fact that you will allow their legacy to live on that you can use their life as a great example for someone else and daily you can utilize it as a testimony to help other people process the emotions of grief because your paradigm your mind your thought process and your emotions are synonymous so if you are a chaotic and emotional wreck then your life will reflect that and so you have to get the peace inside in that room for god and then trust and believe that everything will be okay just like the shooter my woman saying all is well and then you will get peace and solace and use the legacy of your loved one to be a great testimony to someone else and in doing so you will be operating in your divine assignment we all have a divine assignment divine literally means of like and from god he fashioned and designed each and every one of us for a purpose and there is a reason for us being in the earth and if the enemy can distract us and get us to look at our circumstances or get to look get us to look at what we lack or what we have lost or what we feel is missing in our life we will negate to work on our divine assignment i look at the life of david there were multiple times when he lost it all and he lost loved ones that were close to him when he came to ziglag and he seen the place was on fire and the wives were stolen he was all cried out he cried till there were no more tears left in him but then he grabbed the ephod and he began to encourage himself in the lord and then he pursued and he surely overtook them and recovered all but i'm not gonna talk about that time i want you to go to the time in the bible when david son passed away in second samuel chapter 12 and prior to that he had been in sackcloth and ashes fasting and believing god when his son was sick but as soon as he got word from his servant that the lad had died he got up showered and he went to the table to eat 
he got back on course with his divine assignment. And sure, you have lost your loved one, but now you have to come back to God's table and eat of his word and eat of his goodness and trust and believe that he has work for you to do. He fashioned and designed you for such a purpose and you have to use your pain to fuel your purpose. So we're using our pain to fuel our purpose, but we have to understand that when it hurts so bad, we still have to trust God. And we have to ask ourselves this question. It's resounding, just as if the Lord himself was. That's why it sighed God. I have a plan. Do you trust me? You know, God has a plan. Do you trust him? Yes, God, I trust your plan for my life. And I'm going to go through one of my favorite Bible verses. For I know the plans you have, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. In the future, we will be with our loved ones again. That is great hope. So my answer to the previous slide, I have a plan. Do you trust me? Sign God. Yes, I trust your plan. I know I love the King James Version. In Jeremiah 29 and 11 in the King James Version states, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. During your time of grief and sorrow, we have already told God, yes, a resounding yes. Yes, 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 God, I will trust you. Even when it doesn't make sense, God, I'm trusting you. God, I know it's just a process and I will accept your plan. God, I know all is well, God. Lord, I will remember my divine assignment. And I know, God, that even in the midst of my grief, you are thinking of me. And your thoughts of me, they are good. Isn't that something? And they are of peace, not evil, to bring me to an expected end. You didn't take mommy because you wanted to be evil. It was because you didn't want her to suffer. And I have to trust and believe your plan. And whatever it is, if it's the loss of a job, if you're trying to go through a weight loss journey, if you're struggling with temptation, whatever it is, you have to know wherever you are, God is thinking of you and his thoughts toward you are of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. And he said so. Isn't that something? And now we're going to look at this. We're flipping it. We're reversing this Jeremiah 29 and 11, three different ways. The first way we went through it and we read it, that he, his thoughts of us, that he has plans for our life. And his, he declares that his plans are to prosper us and not to harm us. And that his plans are to give us hope and a future that we have a great future and we know that he's thinking of us and that his thoughts towards us says the lord are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us an expected end now we're going to flip it and reverse it a third way i thought this was so phenomenal not only because i love jeremiah 29 11 but as we flipped it and reversed it the third way let's look at it he says for i know the thoughts in the middle of that the H comes that I think towards you, says the Lord. In the middle of the Lord is an O. Thoughts of peace, the, the P at the beginning of peace, and not of evil, the huge E at the top of evil, to give you an expected end, all spell hope. Do you know that hope deferred makes the heart sick? We cannot relinquish our hope. We have to have hope in the calling of the Lord, have hope that better days are to come, have hope that he will give us perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on him. That's right. It's in the word and not just the Asiaism. The Bible declares in Isaiah 26 and 3, thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. 
as we're going through this process, when the grief and the agony gets overwhelming, we have to transition our thoughts and place them on God. And we have to remember that he is still God, that he is sovereign. He rules and reigns all by himself. When we think on the goodness of God and all that he has done for us, our soul has to cry, hallelujah. We have to say, thank you, God, for blessing and delivering us. When we think about his goodness, we get so consumed in, in him and in all that he is in every entity and fiber of his being, all of his attributes from Jehovah Jireh to Jehovah to Sikhanu and Mekadisham to El Shaddai, Elohim and all of the fact that he is Jehovah Nisi, he reigns like a banner in victory. When we think about him, we are assured for peace find our place of peace once we find that place of peace we can rejoice evermore and we can begin to pray when we get in that place in God's presence as we find peace we begin to pray pray without ceasing rejoice evermore we pray without ceasing in everything we're giving thanks for the will of God, Christ Jesus, concerning our lives. We know that he has a master plan for us and that everything is going to work out for our good. Right, Romans 8 and 28 says, And we know that all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. We understand we have a divine calling on our life. We have to be like David. Even though it hurts, we have to shake off those sap cloths and those ashes and we have to get up and get back to work. We can't forget our training. We have to cast our cares on him. My mama's favorite Bible verses, 1 Peter 5 and 7, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. The Lord God cares for you. He, he loves you so much that he knows the number of hairs that you have on your head. He cares enough that he wipes every tear from your eye. I'll never forget when I was a little girl, mommy came home one day. And I was in my room, I had been crying all day from the time I got out of school until she came home. She was working overtime, so it was about 7 p.m. when she got home from making. And she was like, what's wrong with you, baby? Why are you crying? I'm like, I don't have no friends, mommy. <laughs> She's like, I'm your friend. And besides that, Jesus is your friend. He's a friend that sits closer to, your, to you than a brother, and um, than any brother. And she began to talk to me about my tears. And she taught me this verse in Psalms 56 and 8. She told me, she said, hey, you know what? It's okay that you cried from the time you got out of school till I got home. It's all right. Because the angels, they, they keep track of your tears. God keeps track of your tears. And he puts them in a bottle. And the angels take them to heaven. They find you a solution. Yours may be the fact that you need a friend. But whatever it is, whenever you're crying, he tracks your sorrow he tracks your tears and as you see here in psalms 56 and 8 you keep track of all my sorrows you have collected all my tears in your bottle and i thank god that as soon as i can cry them he can dry them that's right i said as soon as i can cry them he will dry them. I feel just like a little lost duck without my mommy. I'm used to saying, mama, mommy, can you hear me? I love you, mama. Mommy this and mommy that. And now I'm quack, quack, quacking without my mommy. And I just feel like the tears are overflowing and they just won't stop coming. But I receive solace in Revelations 21 and 4. For he wipes away all all the tears from their eyes and i'm a part of that there and as fast as i can cry them he will dry them and he will track my tears he will give me a solution to my tears and though i won't ever see mommy again on this side of earth i am sure and fully persuaded that she is experiencing the streets of gold She's not dead. She's only sleeping and that the dead in Christ shall rise first. So I know God's wiping the tears from my eyes. And if he's doing it for me, he's no respect to a person. He's doing it for you as well. Because guess what? God is so God.
He has a plan for our life and we have to trust that he directs our path. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Multiple paths he has for us. Multiple avenues and multiple ways. We just have to trust him. Rely, depend with full assurance in him. Because he's God. And everything has a reason and a purpose. Everything has a reason and a purpose. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Sure, God came to the garden of life and plucked up one of the most beautiful roses ever. My mommy, my cousin, my aunt, my baby, my grandma, my uncles. I can think of a lot of beautiful roses and beautiful lives that he has plucked up. But he's planted them in the heavenly garden. And he has such a grave purpose for them. And he left us here not to suffer, but because we have to finish. And we have to surrender our will to him and trust him with our lives. And find solace in the reading of his word. I read a quote once. It said that dusty Bibles lead to dirty lives. And so, even though our loved ones have transitioned on to be with the Lord, we can't get mad at God. We can't get depressed and we can't stay there arguing and bargaining. We have to accept his perfect will for our lives and get back up and do our divine assignment. We can't let our Bible get like this one in this picture so dusty that you can write out, read me. But you will be like Jesus and you will say, you know what? It is written. It is written. It is written. And you know what? It is written. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We have a lot left living. A lot of living left to do. <laughs> that was a tongue twister. We have a lot of living left to do. And even though we may have lost our loved ones, we have to trust and believe that his word is a living, breathing document. It seeds and there is something in there for everything that we go through. So I challenge you to go back and read that word so that you won't have a dusty Bible and a dirty life. And you would just know without a shadow of a doubt that he is the living word and that the in the beginning was the word and the word was God and it became flesh and it dwelt among us that the word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, it's able to cut between the bone and the marrow, it is a discerner of the heart and the intent of people, it is such a powerful tool, it will help you, it will help you, it will help you. I love you and I pray that you found solace in this video. When it hurts so bad, you just got to trust God because he's ushering you to a higher dimension. He's directing your paths. He has multiple paths for you and you just have to believe that as you surrender to him and you get grounded, rooted, and anchored in his word, that just like the acronym for the Holy Bible, he only loves you. So he left basic instructions before leaving this earth. And we all have, we all owe God a death. It doesn't make it easy as we see our loved ones transition to be with the Lord, but we have to have peace and solace that he really does love us. He gave us these basic instructions before leaving the earth and we won't forget our training and we will do our assignment and get her done. I love you so much. And if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and savior, 
I suggest that you get to know him. And if you don't know how, please get in this Bible and read Romans chapter 10 verses 9 through 13. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died on the cross for you. God raised him from the dead and that makes you saved. I love you so much. While you're at it, go on over to Facebook and like Loving People by Sharing Christ, which is a Christian support group founded by none other than Minister Renata C. McFadden and her best friend Heather Wynn. On Loving People by Sharing Christ, you will find daily devotionals, memes, gifts, and other graphical depictions that display the love of Jesus Christ. While you're there, go ahead and inbox the support group with your prayer requests. Loving people by sharing Christ can be found on Facebook. Go ahead and give them one big thumbs up. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the Ambassadors Hour. If you will, go back and watch our last video. That was a tribute video that I did to my mommy. We celebrated the life and legacy of my wonderful mother who went to be with the Lord on January 29th. 2018 <laughs> 13 long days ago but by faith i'm moving on and trusting and carrying her legacy with me and i created this video to aid anyone else who may be in the grief recovery process that we just have to trust god we really do also you can watch our previous video the abcs of christianity so if you want to know all about your christian faith and know all you need to know about christianity mm -hmm. and how to lead other people to christ go back and watch the abcs of christianity also like share and subscribe to the ambassadors hour and follow us on all of our social media platforms. We love you so much. Goodbye for now.